ジョイトズパッドキャスト変革への道こんにちは伊藤ジョイチです今日のゲストはミスティンラブズの共同創業者と CEO のエヴンチャンさんですエヴンは本当にソフトウェアプログラマーとアーキテクトでかなり前から有名で僕らもかなり技術者の仲間ではファンで,でこういうやっぱりすごいあのちゃんとしたっていうと変ですけどもあの経験があるあのコンピュータープログラマーとかアーキテクトが今ブロックチェーンに取り掛かっているのがあの本当に業界がシフトしているような気がしていて今いろんなブロックチェーンにあのリミットとか制限があるんですけどもそれをあの改善してくれるんじゃないかなっていう期待をとってもみんな持ってますので今日はあのエヴァンの話を聞くのはとても楽しみです。Thank you Evan for being on our show. It's a pleasure. Um, so, maybe you can start by one giving us a little bit of your background.、Uh, yeah, so being a computer software engineer by trade,、uh, being in the tech business 26 years.、Um, yeah, I always, being a technologist, always, you know, kind of my, my passion in life is drive the technology forward.、Uh, so, you know, being through a couple of different companies,、uh, big company stuff, Apple,、mm-hmm. then Facebook.、Um, Software engineer, then building teams,、uh, and now I'm transitioning into a you know, company builder.、Uh, so, so that's me, but、mm-hmm. always in pursuit of you know,、yeah. kind of technology advancement. And, and, and maybe you can tell us a little bit about you know, what kind of work you did at Apple and, 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 and then later at Facebook. Because I, 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 I guess I know I'm into computer programming language,、yeah. so I know about LLVM, but maybe some of the other stuff that you、uh, did. Yeah, I mean, you know, kind of, kind of, I was, I was always interested in programming language as I, I grew up. And so LVM was a chance for me to do something that's impactful, right?、Uh, back in the days, you know, just like, hey, there was an opportunity to make a compiler more modular,、uh, enable the technology to be embedded in lots of other products, right?、Mm-hmm. So, so that, that was what、uh, drove me to it.、Mm-hmm. Um, so, End up building, building substantial uh, impact uh,、mm-hmm. in the industry、um, in ways I never anticipated, right? So that gave me a, a sense, right? If you build、uh, technology and, and you build a great developer platform,、mm-hmm. you know, there's so much creativity. People、yeah. figure out how to use it, right?、Mm-hmm. That, that gave me the taste of it.、Uh, so, so that, that、yeah. was sort of the basis of my career. And it's really like infrastructure. So、mm-hmm. I think for people who don't, Follow programming languages, which are most people in programming languages are the language that you write programs, but you wrote a programming language for programming languages so people can write programming languages. And that's very <laughs> sort of meta、yeah. and infrastructural. And by doing that, I think you unlocked、uh, the ability to move programming languages across platforms. And also, to me, what was interesting about LLVM was that Apple Computer, which was one of the sort of least contributory. Most closed <laughs> companies in the world was they made an open source project. LLVM was a super successful open source project. And I'm curious how you got Apple to agree to do open source. Well, well most of credit goes to my partner, at, you、yeah. know, Chris Ladner. Yeah. So yeah, he, Chris he's amazing, the,、yeah. the brain, he drove it.、Uh, when I met him at Apple, I was hired for a different job, but I quickly was convinced, well, quickly basically took me one day. To,、mm-hmm. to be convinced this is the future、uh, after speaking with him. And then basically, I went to the leadership, say,、uh, either let me do this, which, by the way, I didn't even talk to Chris about this. It's like, w- the two of us will GM this in a year,、mm-hmm. replacing a whole bunch of technology. They say, okay, fine, you do this. Because、yeah. otherwise, I was like, you know, if you don't let me do this, I'm, I'm out of here.、Yeah. Right.、Uh, yeah. kind of <laughs> that, that's how I operate. I get, I, I get things done that、yeah. way.、Uh, and we did it. Right.、Mm-hmm. So, and, and the, Part of the condition was, you know, initially Apple, you know, saw an opportunity, saw a potential solution.、Uh, they didn't really fully grok what,、mm-hmm. what it could be. And, and the technology was already、uh, was a research project, right?、Mm-hmm. It was already open source. And, and we managed to convince,、um, you know, the, the management team, s like, this is the way to go, right? Because、mm-hmm. mm-hmm. with all the open source contribution, Apple would have to、uh, first, you know, spend a lot of resource on it.、Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Secondly, Uh, and they also liked the idea, right? They also、mm-hmm. saw the, the opportunity to do something、mm-hmm. that's bigger than、mm-hmm. you know, solving an immediate problem.、Mm-hmm. Um, and, and open sourcing it was the right way to go.、Uh, it did take some, some you know, finance,、mm-hmm. f- finango to, to get them to do it, but、mm-hmm. um, you know, that was a great decision at the time. Interesting. And, and then what led you to Facebook? And then what led you to the Facebook blockchain work? 
Um, so, you know, I spent 10 years at Apple, most of it were great. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think yeah, at some point in time, you know, I sort of I did what I could do. Uh, you know, it, it, I wanted to do something a little bit different. Mm -hmm. and that, that was basically it. Not that my career at Apple was mm -hmm. not good at the time, but I, I want something new. Uh, mm -hmm. Still in the programming language space, but Facebook recruited me multiple times to try to uh, let the effort. And so I, after the third time I jumped at it, say, mm -hmm. okay, let me try something different. Um, and I, I was quite successful, you know, in, in very, very short amount of time. In a couple of years, I built a pretty sizable organization. Uh, but two things happened. One is I got exposed to crypto. Mm -hmm. um, this is 2016, 17. Mm -hmm. I started looking at it, saw the opportunity. You know, I, I was convinced there's something great that mm -hmm. can happen. I also convinced of the opportunity. Mm -hmm. It was so early. I saw lots and lots of issues with you know, everything from the program language, mm -hmm. Solidity, the EVN environment, on top of that, to the actual system. I said, like, okay, here's something that has great potential. Mm -hmm. It's going to be world changing. At the same time, nobody's kind of ha have figured it out. Mm -hmm. So the combination of those drove me to it. So I started doing some uh, sort of internal kind of, you know, it was a hobby, right? Mm -hmm. At the beginning, right? I was inviting people to give talks. Myself was digging in, trying to learn about it, you know, you know, working with some projects outside. Uh, so when, you know, 28, late 2018, I think, when they start thinking about the Libra project mm -hmm. uh, for payment rail, and I, I sort of was considering either going to a startup, do something there, but then I recognize I want to do something serious. I need the talent. It mm -hmm. was too early for me to be able to do a startup and, and sort of, you know, hire, mm -hmm. you know, kind of the talent I needed to do this. So that was a perfect opportunity for me to uh, join the Libra project. Mm -hmm. And I joined it to lead both the developer platform, uh, the program language, everything, as well as the, the research. Because mm -hmm. I was convinced um, it, it would take uh, some really, really serious scientific advancement mm -hmm. to build what we want to build. Interesting. And, and then what happened? Like, why didn't it become the... <laughs> like the final thing in, in sign of Facebook. Yeah, to the I extent mean, that you can talk about. Yeah, I mean, yeah. a couple of things, right? One, one, it's uh, the pressure from the government, the, the mm -hmm. political and regulatory pressure. The other one is we did make some mistakes uh, in positioning the project mm -hmm. in the approach to taking it. Uh, I think I think in, in hindsight, right, probably should have separated the, the infrastructure from the product. Mm -hmm. uh, the product was a part that got everybody spooked. And mm -hmm. the product perhaps was not completely defined correctly at the beginning. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's it's a little bit too too scary mm -hmm. to people. Mm -hmm. um, so so a few things, right? And, and and partly because we didn't quite understand how to build, right? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. There's a few aspects uh, that were done really well, mm -hmm. right? We were really proud to work on the Move program mm -hmm. language. Uh, we uh, we're really, you know, proud of some of the advancement on the cryptography side and, and mm -hmm. a few other things. Uh, but at the same time, the system itself was didn't quite have that breakthrough, mm -hmm. right? We we haven't figured that out. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's sort of the infrastructure wasn't all we wanted to be, and mm -hmm. the product was meeting resistance mm -hmm. from the government agency. So. Uh, but we did open source everything, and yeah. that was a great decision. Again, mm -hmm. right? The, you know, the open source is the is the current is the future. Uh, yeah. That's where yeah. we're ready to go. So allow us to sort of take that learning, take mm -hmm. a lot of the component we build, mm -hmm. and build future products. And once you left, and did you know you were going to do a startup when you left? Oh yeah, yeah. I left yeah. to do a start. I see. Right. I, see. I mean, I think uh, it was middle of last year. It was very apparent, right? Okay. That wasn't. We're not going to be able to move yeah. forward and and launch the product. And at the same time, I feel like you know, in, in terms of the system, mm -hmm. you know, my my colleagues and I wanted to build. That wasn't the place, right? Yeah. It it's just not a good fit for yeah. a big company. Uh, so it's about a year ago. Yeah, it's, it's a, just a little bit over a year yeah. ago. September is when I left. And um, now you have 100 people. We're close to 100 yeah. people. And, and, and 300 and 
40 million dollars <laughs> yeah something right, like something that, like that. something yeah. like that in, in, yeah uh in, in the yes yeah was that easy i mean did the it, did they come after you and say here take our money uh, or was it was it hard or it, in the middle so sort of yes and no right mm -hmm. it was it was initially easy right mm -hmm. the the market was booming for a while you know got a lot of interest especially once we figure out what we want to build mm -hmm. there was a lot of interest so it felt like it was going to be easy then the market crashed right mm -hmm. a serious problems right. from luna to uh you know three arrow to south here which made it a lot harder mm -hmm. uh ultimately i think you know we got it done right yeah. the silver lining is it it you know we learned a few things mm -hmm. about how uh, investors make decisions and make sure that the investors yeah. on our cap tables are yeah. you know are, are all yeah. have high high conviction yeah and it was I mean, because both Andreessen and FTX have huge investments in the future of Web3 was the pitch basically, the dream team is here, we're going to solve your problems and unlock Web3 for you. Is that? <laughs> it wasn't quite as easy, right? Series A was kind of like that. That was mm -hmm. when we just came out, we raised the wrong and where we were just saying, hey, here's all the things we have done. Here's mm -hmm. the things we could do. Uh, we're working on something we don't, didn't quite know it, right? Yeah, but yeah. the team, right? Yeah. And that was the first round. It was a small, smaller mm -hmm. round. Uh, but when we did the Series B, it was basically for building Sui mm -hmm. uh, and the future product. Mm -hmm. That was a little harder, right? Because mm -hmm. you know the valuation is hard, higher, the amount yeah. is higher. It's a serious project, require a lot of capital. Mm -hmm. uh, but by then, we're already kind of figuring out. We mm -hmm. already figure out what we want to build. It's really about sort of telling the story, mm -hmm. right? Why mm -hmm. are we building yet another layer one? How is it different? What's yeah. our vision? So so can you describe, I mean, I, I, we, some people can watch the um, uh, earlier talk, but um, in, in sort of a nutshell, I mean, what, what are the th main things that are broken on the blockchain and how are you fixing them? Yeah, uh, I'll say the the, uh, the the current blockchain, the best way you could describe it, they're very, they build around this, architecture, this uh, global state, which is, you know, ledger that's good for uh, tracking the history of fin financial transactions, right? Mm -hmm. It's essentially you, you, you incrementing decre decreasing uh, balances, mm -hmm. right, in, mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. So it's pretty simple uh, in, in, uh, in, in terms of the functionality, right? Mm -hmm. And yes, the, 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 the community have built layers on top, build more functionality on top of an mm -hmm. NFT, but it's clunky. Right, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. like mapping a uh, more complex, mm -hmm. you know, concept on top of a ledger that's ultimately very simple. Mm -hmm. So you, what you're seeing is everything is represented as raw bytes. The data models are all kind of funky, right? They're owned mm -hmm. by the smart contract, mm -hmm. right? It just doesn't have the first class concept of mm -hmm. assets, right? When you think about what blockchain is all about, it's representing asset. Mm -hmm. So you should be able to model any kind of asset, you should be able to program against the asset, you should be able to do all these things, transfer, update mm -hmm. them, right? So that it was very apparent there's so much limitation mm -hmm. and the limitation is not just in terms of you know, kind of scalability, not just performance, mm -hmm. not security, it's expressness mm -hmm. of, uh, off of it. So we really set out to sort of work backwards, right? Understanding, uh, you know, kind of what the future will look like in terms of product. And to understand that you have to understand what are the current problems and how do you mm -hmm. solve them? Mm -hmm. How do we enable the product builders to solve them? And then with that, you understand, have to understand the requirement mm -hmm. from a product builder perspective, then you you understand what sort of infrastructure you should build to yeah. support that. Because ultimately, what we're building at the essence is just a developer platform. Yeah, yeah, interesting. And um, so, so I guess it's in computer programmes, but but the current blockchain, if I imagine, is kind of like a ledger mm -hmm. where you're kind of writing everything in a flat thing and yours is more object oriented and hierarchical, parallel, hierarchical, yeah. hierarchical, more structured. Yeah. yeah. It, to me, it reminds me of the difference between C and Lisp, but, <laughs> but, but C1, I <laughs> well, mean, it was but, easier for some people. I don't know. Is, 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 I mean, do you feel it's unfair to call you Lisp? I guess it is, but yeah, I mean, I think when people think about Lisp, but they don't think about the expressiveness, right? Because right, right. most people are not familiar, more Lisp, not familiar like, yeah. with it. JavaScript is also, a, a, you know, it's a little, it's, it's also imperfect, it, yeah. you know. It's not, lispier, but it's yeah. still clunky, right? Right, right. right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. ultimately, if you think about it, it's it's all around the concept of yeah. assets, right? And yeah. assets are by definition, 
not one uniform thing, right? Yeah. It's it takes on any shape. Mm -hmm. uh, so so if you if your concept assets right for you build infrastructure for non fungible tokens, mm -hmm. I mean for fungible tokens essentially initially for mm -hmm. for Ethereum right everything is just essentially a balance right. Yeah. And yeah. then, then you want to move that to any kind of asset. You have a lot of challenge and, in doing and, a model. And so, just for probably lay people, you're gonna because right now with Ethereum, um, it's it's like a small computer with very little memory. So you have to store things on an outside device, mm -hmm. and um, and I, I guess they solve the energy problem now mostly mm -hmm. by moving to proof of stake. But that's probably speed, um, scalability. Well, speed and scalability, transaction costs, storage, and energy were the main things with energy now not issue. Are, like, can you describe at what scale you're going to be fixing yeah. these things? I'm, I'm going to answer, yeah. answer the question, but in a slightly yeah, different yeah. way, right? When we think about scalability, we feel like that's not enough, okay. right? Um, you know, because everybody's talking about you're going to add all these layers or layer twos and all that to solve scalability problem or different this and that, right? But it still doesn't quite address the core issues mm -hmm. from a developer point of view. What developer needs is not, they don't care about scalability. They, they care about using infrastructure that where they don't have to think about it. They can mm -hmm. just consume it, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, and what does that mean is, you know, they don't think in terms of like how many transactions you can do. They mm -hmm. think about what I, my product needs, mm -hmm. right? If I keep on consuming it, is it gonna run out? Mm -hmm. If I, if somebody else is consuming the infrastructure capacity, is it gonna affect me, mm -hmm. right? Is mm -hmm. it gonna to cost, my cost of operation goes through the roof, mm -hmm. right? You know, if my business is going to be impacted by somebody doing a, a land sale, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. has already happened, we've seen that happen yep. and goes through 100% my, my, my business in trouble, yeah. right? So, so thinking more along that line, so then you realize what they really need is elasticity, mm -hmm. right? This ability for the capacity to increase to meet demands mm -hmm. at any given point in time, mm -hmm. right? Because demands are never constant; it's mm -hmm. always spiky, mm -hmm. right? It's it's about how do you deal with that, right? Mm -hmm. So when we think about scalability, with that, that's how what what we think about. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, and and obviously you're 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 also a type of proof of stake and don't require the kind of energy that Bitcoin does, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and it's not even that, right? It's 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 how efficient can you produce these mm -hmm. capacity, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so which means uh, if you can make the operation more efficient mm -hmm. and you know rather than requiring very large systems, you're going to be greener, right? 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 And and when is and when can we use it and when can uh, we test oh, it? Yeah. Well, I mean, for developer people are using it now, right? Mm -hmm. Developer are building uh, using the DevNet today. Today has been doing it uh, for a while. So the next phase we're going to go in is the testnet mm -hmm. phase. The difference between DevNet and testnet is now it's not a single entity operating the network, right? It's mm -hmm. going to be run by lots and lots, right. you know, different It'll entities, centralized right. validators right. and things. So right. it's about making sure everybody who participates in the network can run efficiently. Because we're talking about a very different kind of system. They're going to have to deal with a spiky kind of demands. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's going to have lots of different surprises mm -hmm. in, how, in terms of how people you know, consume them, right? Because for example, the other day when the developer just you know, sort of send a transaction that basically create an object that in, include an in, entire in, in, Wikipedia entry. Mm -hmm. Right, and it's like, wow, that happened, right? So these are, you know, surprises nobody mm -hmm. can see ahead of time, and the network's humming along, right? Yep. But yep. but if you think about lots and lots of different scenarios that could surprise mm -hmm. the operators, and we want to make sure mm -hmm. uh, all the different scenarios are battle tested uh, before see. we go to mainnet, so, which hopefully, which we expect will be the first quarter next year. Okay, so testnet in the next month or so. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. coming any any day now. Once we feel like we're ready, okay. and and then mainnet. So for normal people to use it, sometime first quarter next year. So it's pretty soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty soon. So so months, not years, right? Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's exciting because we're talking to a lot of big companies that want to do tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of transactions, and you can't do it right now. But you'll easily be able to cover this if um, 
yeah within six months if you're out and go as planned right yeah yeah and and like any new systems where we we, we need to balance the the need the mm -hmm. as well as the operational mm -hmm. uh, readiness right you know we, we're going to be watching that yep. and try to balance the two uh rather than say here you go right mm -hmm. do everything possible we want to stage it right. and, and this is going to be a living system it's going to mm -hmm. be continuously uh, improved and, and how much if, if you're a normal solidity developer in our Hinkaku community, how much new stuff are they going to have to learn? How long will it take for them to learn your system? You yeah, know? if you're a Solidity engineer, which means your focus is on building the, the protocols, right? Mm -hmm. Writing things like, like those. Uh, uh, the feedback we're getting is the there's a learning curve because mm -hmm. of the new language, but it takes a few days, mm -hmm. uh, two, three days. And the feedback we're getting is the productivity boost is mm -hmm. like 10x yeah. or higher. Uh, so we were getting very, very positive feedback. And you have the programming language move, which yeah. is already available. And and you can, I understand that you can, obviously with your background, it makes sense that you can compile it into Solidity, but also run it natively. And so is that is that true? No, no, you, you don't, You I mean, theoretically software is possible to, yeah. Okay, I thought there was a cross compiler. No, uh, I'm sure somebody's yeah, working on it, but the problem is that you lose all the reason, you the, know, the all reason the to use it, it right? Because right, right, it's, it's not just a source level language, right? There's a uh, static and, and dynamic enforcement of these certain rules, right? Mm -hmm. All the properties around, hey, making sure the, uh, the you know, the bar checkers, mm -hmm. right, do the thing, uh, and you know, you need to make enforce all these you know, properties, mm -hmm. like you can't have double spend right, and all right, that right. sort of thing. If you just compile into Solidity, you kind of lost it. Into okay, it. So, so it's not like TypeScript and JavaScript where no, it just no. helps you with Solidity. Right. It's a completely yeah. different thing. Yeah. And, and the other one is also possible, but these kind of transpilers mm -hmm. are sometimes useful for prototyping, yeah, uh, yeah. But, but usually it's not a great product. It. Okay, yeah. got it, got it. Um, and then to go back a little bit to sort of your background, I mean, you spent most of your life as a, engineer working in a big company like how did you decide you want to go and do a startup yeah i mean i think it's i i always wanted to do something mm -hmm. um you know the big companies sort of like allow me to learn things and and build a relationship and and you know you know have people who i know yeah. have, you know have the skills to build these things but um it's the timing right i feel mm -hmm. like this is the time right this is a feel i feel like my skill is perfectly suited yeah. for it, right? It's it's very multidisciplinary, which yeah. is exciting for me. Yeah. And I have great team in yeah. place uh, and the opportunities are all there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's yeah. just basically the right time, the yeah. right space and the right ev team, everything. Yeah, yeah I mean, I think up. sort of no joking aside, I mean, I think in, in Japan, but also in the US, I mean, startups are kind of ageist. They want like 20 year olds, you know? And, mm -hmm. and I think that there's a, a lot of, sort of romanticization of like young inexperienced people coming in and sort of breaking the mold. And, you know, and in, in Japan, I think, you know, we have, and also a lot of the people are salesy and not mm -hmm. engineers, you know, and I think having uh, an older engineer from a big company doing a startup, raising $300 million and building a new blockchain is kind of a great story. And I think for me, I think for Japanese entrepreneurs, um, I wish more engineers became entrepreneurs. And a lot of the best cryptographers I see are just stuck, not just cryptographers, a lot of great engineers are stuck in big companies yeah. doing relatively boring things. And it's, it's, I feel like they should go and build stuff. I, I agree, right? Um, you got to understand what you're good at, yep. right? First, yep. first of all, I mean, it's not, a, age is really not a limit. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it also depends on what you want to build, right? So a lot of, yeah. you know, if, if what you're addressing is something, it doesn't necessarily require deep tech, maybe mm -hmm. maybe you don't need that year's experience and yeah. some breakthrough to be able to launch a company, right? Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of startups are like that. Uh, what we're building is require cutting edge, you know, technology mm -hmm. across multiple disciplines, distributed system, cryptography, mm -hmm. programming language, security, everything, right? It's it's a little bit different, yeah. right? And that's where the mm -hmm. the deep technical background, just not just me, right? Yeah. Actually, I'll probably, like I have three yeah. technical co-founders who are like geniuses, right? They're the best of the best. They're mm -hmm. the real deal. Yeah. Um, you know, I bring other value to it. So, so that's, mm -hmm. you know, and, it, and it really depends on the situation, yeah. depends on what you want to do. And going from zero to a hundred, highly qualified engineers in one year is it's not easy you have to have had experience managing people right yeah yeah, yeah. definitely right and it's not just engineers right yeah. that's the thing we're learning it's like yeah. yes the we, we 
a lot of the the team are uh, engineers or yeah. technical background, but we have product people. We have people who deal with business side, yeah. you know, relationship, working with customers, working mm -hmm. with you know, we have legal team, right, yeah. operation yeah. team. Uh, you so, know, so when did you when did you hire a recruiter? Uh, actually, it's funny. The recruiter is one of the first ones I hired. Yeah, see, uh, that makes sense. <laughs> uh, yeah, because because I think you've done an amazing job hiring great people. And I think recruiting is also a really important thing for scaling, right? So you hire, so recruiter was one of the first people you hired. Yeah, yeah it's a very, very fortunate one. Uh, somebody I work with in the past, and he's great. Yeah, yeah. He's just at that point in time, so yeah, I'm thinking about doing something. He's like, hold, hold on, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> give yeah. me a couple of days. I may have a job for you. Yeah, uh, yeah, it, it, you know yeah. that that comes back, right? It's right. because I work in many, many years in companies, you mm -hmm. know, and I have people who love working with me. I love working with them. So yeah. it makes that a lot easier. Yeah. Yeah. That's, re that's really interesting. And, and, and you, this is your first time back in Japan since COVID, right? So <laughs> first is. time since, since, um, since, uh, Missa Labs too. Yes. Right? Yeah. 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 How, 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 what do you, how it, are you it's feeling? Great. It's great. It looks like nothing changed, right? In, mm -hmm. in almost three years, it's as vibrant a city as I, as I have ever mm -hmm. remember. The food is e even better mm -hmm. <laughs> in a lot of ways, mm -hmm. uh, and the currency, uh, you know, make, make us <laughs> it's, even better. It's, it's so good it's, for you, bad for yeah, us. But yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 things are cheap. Yeah, yeah. I guess it's yeah. good for us because we have more. We'll have. We'll get more people yeah. coming. Um, but uh, but yeah, because as we, we've we've seen maybe from meeting some of the people in our network. I mean, Japan's trying to get this going. So I think it's good timing um, for you. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Japan has so much to offer. First class on the best IPs, mm -hmm. right? You know, mm -hmm. if you think about what will make consumer, everybody to be excited about Web3, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's through these, right? The, mm -hmm. You know, if you have ownership in things or they're familiar with it, love, mm -hmm. that's the best way, right? Yeah. Japan is in a great position. Yeah. And and you've you, that's one of your things too is working with more traditional enterprise companies and bigger organizations, right? I think that's a well, yeah, it's 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 our observation, right? I, I think uh, what this field has gone through is uh, phases experiment and learning about what can be built, mm -hmm. you know, what the capability of these uh, technologies, right? But if you think about you know what has been produced, most of them are protocol. Mm -hmm. Right, you know, protocol. Consumers don't care about protocols. Yeah, yeah. Right, yep. they want products they interact mm -hmm. with. Mm -hmm. uh, consumer uh, protocols are sort of building blocks. Mm -hmm. um, you know that that they are part of the product, mm -hmm. and that's what make this is you know exciting. Is you 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 use these protocol these building blocks to solve problems that you you could not solve before. Mm -hmm. uh, that's ultimately what it is. But it's also a challenge for for normal people to get to understand what what is it mm -hmm. you know you're building what mm -hmm. is this web three thing mm -hmm. right so we have few examples of uh you know the nft collectible craze mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. for for a while uh you know people experimenting with DeFi, mm -hmm. right um but for it to have sustainable success right mm -hmm. it's got to be everybody can you know when they're interacting with the application on the phone mm -hmm. on the computer are benefiting Mm -hmm. from the technology. And that's when it becomes mainstream, becomes sustainable. Yeah. Uh, and so we are working with a lot of community builders, mm -hmm. right? Because they are the one that's going to figuring out these breakthrough mm -hmm. interaction, like mm -hmm. how to solve these problems. Yeah. So they're super important. For a platform, the more you have, the better they are, mm -hmm. the more, the richer, the more powerful mm -hmm. the yep. platform is. But then ultimately it's about the product experience you deliver to consumers, mm -hmm. right? So we're working with both mm -hmm. types okay. of developers mm -hmm. for that reason. Yep. So Evan, thanks so much for joining this and I look forward to having a discussion with the Orca team after this. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah, thanks.